upset. Good thing the compressor is going on because it won't come back on for a little while. <laughs> All right, hey, what's up, guys? Hopefully, everybody out there can hear me. Um, we got, uh, yeah, just give us a shout out, make sure that you can hear me okay. We had some audio problems earlier, but um, yeah, give us a shout out, make sure in the, in the comments. I did wanna mention that we are doing some live giveaways tonight. Uh, we're doing it a little bit different. So all you have to do in order to enter is a couple of things, just hashtag, time warp let's go ahead and um let's go right here so they can see exactly what they need to do here time warp okay let's show that all right we have people on here oh a whole 57 people look at that okay so we are doing some giveaways real quick like i would i would like i was explaining we're going to do some giveaways it's going to be a little bit different so um in in order to enter all you have to do is hashtag time warp in the comments and what we're going to do is through Streamyard, is that working through Streamyard, we're going to go ahead and be able to choose some winners uh no amazon can't do it so yeah so sorry if you are streaming on amazon uh, unfortunately no that's not true i think they can i don't know we'll find out uh so it's all new to us so we'll figure it out but we did want to show you uh one other thing is we did get the shirts in like people have been asking um these are them this is an extra large i we call it the you can either call it a party shirt or a work shirt we call it a work party shirt so um, i'm gonna go ahead and work in it we're gonna we're gonna jump into doing some metal flake on a sportster tank uh we're also i'm also gonna take some ideas like what you guys want me to paint so this is my tank i picked up at a local swap meet uh so i'm basically i know i'm gonna metal flake it um, but from then on, um, I think I'm just going to take suggestions and see if anything pops up that I think that, uh, should, should happen. So, um, yeah, if you guys have ideas of what you want me to paint, go ahead and, um, shoot those, those out at any time. Uh, but, uh, yeah, we got the thing primer. I'll show you how we, uh, sand it down. We're going to apply some guide coat, um, block it down. I did get a kind of a nasty run in it. So I was like, oh, that's good. At least I can show them how to do that as well. So we'll hand block that down and um use a little bit of metal flake tonight and so like i said comment time warp hashtag time warp it's automatically going to put you in to a uh, some kind of a will that's gonna sh it's gonna choose it for us so it's gonna keep everything all even steven and chances are anybody can win oh and the other thing is you do need to be in the us or in canada like it says oh they don't say that no more but Okay, but yeah, there it is. So we are going to give away a couple of shirts, huh? We have these in uh, large, extra large, extra, extra large, and we have them in triple, right? Is that correct? We have them in triple X. So if you win tonight, uh, whether you win a shirt or we'll let you know, that um, we'll give away a couple of candy packs. We're going to give some stuff away today because um, that just sounds fun <laughs> so let's just do it uh so we'll, we'll go ahead and give away a few shirts let us know what size but you do need to email us at info at line line and we'll go ahead and put that on the screen once we have some winners that way you know how to contact us how to get your uh, shirt size to us and stuff like that but i'm not going to ramble on because i know we're here to uh, hopefully learn a couple of things um maybe this will be kind of old news for a, a lot of people because what we're doing is pretty basic. We're going to be sanding down some primer and metal flaking. Uh, but I will show you the easier way of doing it. I will also show you here in a little bit um, the booth. So you're going to want to stick around because when we have a little bit of dead time, some dry time, once the fumes are out of there, I'll go ahead and bring you in. Um, make sure you're wearing your respirator. And we'll, uh, we'll look at the fan, uh, how that's kind of set up, and we'll see how I built this thing. So this is not like a traditional booth. This is built by 
uh, me and my buddy. It's uh, drywalled and stuff like that. But we'll get into that later. So stick around because you, I have a lot of questions about the booth. So, and uh, I'll kind of give you my honest opinion on what I would do if I was to do it over. Ashley, Ashley is with us. So you can go ahead and chime in, Ashley. Say hi. hi <laughs> All right. She's here. She's happy the shirts are in too. So, I'm so happy. Yep. Then we're going to have some other t-shirts. We have another design that um, oh, we'll be doing soon. So we'll have the t-shirts and the hoodies coming out right next, but we do have these nice shirts and they are only available to win tonight, but sometime tomorrow you'll see them pop up on Amazon, uh, the big cartel and the Shopify Limeline website. So take a good look at that. They're just a tape and you can see it, but it's a, I don't know. I'm not going to talk a whole lot about it, but I liked it. We tested a couple of different ones, just like we do with the products. Uh, I, I like this one in particular because it didn't wrinkle as much, but what do I know? But I know what I like. This is what I like. So, all right, we got, uh, we got some company here. Oh, we got a super chat. Thank you so much, Mr. C for the $10 super chat. Thank you so much for that. Um, let me just, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about, okay, we will be, this is what we're doing tonight. Um, I did layer out, uh, this was painted with some kind of a paint. I did a test on it. The paint seemed okay. Um, it didn't loosen up the way I did that test was I just took some lacquer thinner on a rag, laid it on there. It looked pretty good. Um, I got a pretty bad run right there because I wanted to fill a little bit of a, a divot there. Um, just applied too much. That's okay. We're going to be able to sand that down. No biggie and uh, block this thing down, get ready for some metal flake. So that's what we'll be doing. Uh, we can check in with our correspondent. Is he still in there? Let's see. Is he is he work? Oh, there he is right there. What up there, Lo? You you in there? Oh yeah, I'm here, guys. You're on I'm the here. stream. All right. What's yes, up, indeed. man? We got our on, on, on site uh, correspondent down in North Carolina. No, no, no. Uh, Louisiana. Louisiana. Yeah, Louisiana. Yes, yes, yes. So, uh, yeah, so we're, we're going to have some dead time tonight, um, dry times. Unfortunately, you just got to wait a little bit. You apply a coat of clear coat or primer or something like that. You do have to wait a certain amount of time in between. Um, a lot, there's a lot of variables with that uh, being the, um, the, the gun you're spraying with, um, obviously the temperature it is, the humidity. Uh, I, uh, Lo will talk more about that, I'm sure, um, a little bit later. But... You, and sometimes you have to tweak what you do uh, to make things work. Uh, and one of those things is sometimes you have to wait longer between dry times. Sometimes you don't have to wait so long. Sometimes you have to reduce your pain out a little bit more. Um, there's just certain things you have to tweak. So there's not really like when people ask for air pressure volume for reduction and um, anything besides part A and part B that go together, the, the reducing part and other stuff like that it are, um, could be you know there's no hard rules with that sometimes you need to change it up to make things work but uh, i don't know you agree with me on that or uh yeah oh yeah 100 percent in the ass 100 percent, man especially down here right now humidity is horrible yeah so that's something that we don't even fight that all really at all here uh, here in um, utah it's a pretty dry climate so um, which i mean if it, you if you've got a booth it's not as bad um, cause you can get a little bit of airflow and you can have some, you know, you, you can fiddle with it a little more, but when you're like me under the carport or, you know, just in a little shop or a garage, man, you, you gotta learn to, to roll with the punches, you know, like you say, you gotta find out what, what works for you, you know, whether it yep. be, you know, adding more reducer or whatever. I actually shot, um, that two to one clear last night, late last, I say late last night, it's about nine o'clock. And uh, when I shot it during the day, it laid beautiful. When I shot it last night, it it looked like a meteor hit it. And so what I did is I reduced it a little bit, put a little reducer in there, um, let it tack up, and then just did like a flood coat on top of it. And it actually, after I let it bake in my Morgan building <laughs> in the Louisiana heat, this morning when I pulled that board out, it was, other than a couple pieces of trash, it laid flat and slick. You couldn't even tell it come out hideous like it did at first yeah and sometimes that's just the way things work like that you gotta get a couple of coats on there in order for things to smooth out yeah, um, sometimes with yeah with, with clear you just have to let it you gotta leave it alone let it because it'll it'll kind of auto level on you you know it'll flatten out yeah 
And I think a lot of people forget that actually, because when you go to to spray the first coat, they're expecting good results on the first coat. Right. And it's like if you right. do that, if you're trying to get if you're trying to get it smooth and looking like you want a finished look on your first coat, you're gonna run it. You know, you, that's gonna happen. You, so, and another thing is, if you're gonna run it, like wait till later on, like in a later coat. <laughs> Don't do it on your first one, man, because that's gonna cause all kinds of drag and stuff like that. Uh, moving a lot of times around. A lot of times I've noticed, like, um, especially if it's on, like, your first coat, if you lay down your uh, your metal flake and then you're laying your, you know, your couple coats of clear, if it's on something small like a motorcycle tank, if I catch a run and it's kind of close to the bottom edge, I'll almost, like, flood it just a little bit and make that run run off the side of the, off the, side of the tank. That way, when it drips off the side, you can just cut it off with a razor blade, you know, instead yeah. of having to drip in the middle of it. If you can yeah. do that, you you, you got to have been painting a little bit of, to, to learn how to do that without it still looking like it's grabbed everything and just kind of pulled it down. Yeah. And a lot of times, usually when I find I have a run, it's like, you know, I'm just going to take this run out and usually re-clear it anyways and do a couple of flow coats on the top. You can do three thinner coats, maybe even reduce that with a little bit of urethane reducer to get that smooth out. And then you got less cutting and buffing to do because it's right. really nice and smooth when you start, you know. So if you're, if you're clear coating on top of base coat, that already has a texture, that texture is going to transfer over slightly, you know, because mm -hmm. if, if you're, if you're clearing on top of sanded clear coat, that's already dry. I mean, it comes out like it, it starts whipping out real quick, like starting to look yeah. like first, second coats looking good. Third coat, it looks phenomenal, you know, not much orange peel at all. So I always kind of side with going with a flow coat sometimes and stuff like that, but I'm going to jump into, um, we'll, we'll get to more of that. Okay, let's we'll, we'll let's go ahead and shout out these super chats. You can always throw them on the screen too. So John, give me ten dollars. So thank you for what you do. Yeah, thanks, John. And Appreciate that. So Daniel, ten dollars said from the fresh newborn future He just came in his wife just had a baby. Oh, right. awesome, awesome. Yeah, I think we've seen that. Yeah, so I'm gonna get this uh, camera. So excuse me if you wanna. I'm gonna get you guys whipped around here. Uh, I'll just get it whipped around real quick. No, you can do a bevel. Okay, let's see here. Oh, sorry, guys. Getting you guy all set up for what we got over here. Whew. Tampa, huh? Uh, okay, okay. All right, Lo, we're gonna check back into you. I wanna, I'm gonna go over um, applying some guide coat and blocking this thing down, and then um, probably get some black base on here, and then with some dry times, we'll be coming back to you and see what you got. All right, man. I'm gonna do some painting, uh -huh. brother. See y'all. All, all right, bit. dude. All right, see you soon. All right, guys. Let's go ahead and let's get this back in the charger. I don't know where it is. Right here. Okay, all right. All right, we got a tank here. As you can see, we use the uh, 2K primer on it. Limeline uh, 2K primer. So this is part A mixed with part b um we sprayed like i like i talked a little bit earlier this did have um some paint on there i took some lacquer thinner on a rag i laid it down um and then I pulled it up it nothing got disturbed um, so at that point i felt good that it was a good two-part paint um it was holding up so what i did is i uh 400 gridded everything down i did have a couple of problem areas i needed to go all the way down to bare metal um, i did hit it with a little bit of um self-etching in those bare area and I hit this with that 2K primer. So that's where we're at now. As you can see, there was like a little divot right here. Look at that run. Um, I'm so embarrassed right now, but that's just how it goes. But I'm gonna show you how, I'm gonna show you how you take care of that. I have some, so if you haven't never heard of this, guide coat, pretty simple stuff. It's like sprayable, like it's like a chalky, black chalky substance. I don't need to get this thing mixed up though. 
How long will the candy colors and care base go for if it's unopened? Uh, five years. On the on anything that's unopened, it's gonna be five years. Come on, baby. I can feel it's all thick on the bottom. Okay. Maybe that's good. Ask them if they can hear. Can they hear me? But I thought someone said they can't hear me. Oh, yeah, you just gotta make sure you you add it to the screen. Add to this. When you add it. And let me go. Do you want him on there? Yeah. Okay. Now you got it. Now you can hear you. Okay. Thanks, guys. I gotta mix this up a little bit more. Come on. How long? Um, how long will the candy and stuff last if it is open? If it is open, that's a good question. How much is it? How much of it is open? <laughs> uh, if you open it, it's still shut. Um, the candies are gonna last quite a long time still. Uh, within a couple of years, uh, I'm guessing, but that's definitely going to, um, you know, slow down the aging process on that. That's going to, or speed it up, I should say. But yeah. A couple, a couple years, the candy's going to last longer, but it will like lose. It'll get thicker. You could always thin that back up pretty easy with a urethane. Okay. So I'm using that guide coat and we're not, we're just kind of going over it like with a tap coat like this. Okay, so right here where I have that run, I'm gonna kind of get that darkened up. That way I know I have a problem area right there that I need to take care of. Yeah, if you've never used this stuff, it's awesome. This tells you all, it gives you all your low spots, um, definitely, especially if you're using a hard block. Somebody said, need one of those Thawgall paint shakers. Back out loud. I've never seen those. All right, I forgot to need a water bottle real quick. Let me. You had to go fetch a pedal of water. Hopefully, you don't come tumbling down the hill. Sorry, Jack's grabbing his pell water. Okay, I did want to show you how we're going to address this run right here. Whew. I'm running upstairs. I'm going to... There we go. We can see that really good. Look at that thing. All right. It's super dry, though. So, Okay, I got some 600 grit. We could use 400 grit. It would speed up the process a little bit. Go ahead and throw... Okay, so 600 grit, a little bit of water. This is a great thing about guide coat is look at that. It shows you exactly where the low spots are. John's asking see. if you're gonna get any of the larger hood shapes back in stock. Oh yeah, those have been out of stock for like, they may be for good. I'm working on something else, though, that might be um, not quite the same thing, but pretty close to that. So, yeah, I know you guys want those bigger hoods. They're awesome. They're kind of expensive, though. That's the problem. All right, working that a little bit more. You can still see the low areas right there. So there was the big sag right there. Sand really good. We want to make sure we're sanding on the run. So the sag's this way, the run and the sag right here and right here. So we're going to stand this way and then kind of back and forth. I really want to concentrate on, you know, following this, where the run actually was. 
right here is a little bit of a sag, but all that orange peel, if y'all wonder what orange peel is, that's orange peel right there. This can happen in primer, it can happen in clear coat. The guide coat does a good job of showing exactly um, what your surface looks like. Without it, you would think that this was completely smooth, but if you look real close, it's definitely not. There's pits right there. It's orange peel. That's just the bottom of the orange peel. So we've got to, we don't necessarily have to get it out with this hard block. Um, the hard block is nice because if you do have any dents, you're going to find them easy, easier than if you're like, you're using a soft block because a soft block will sand into a dent a little bit, not cutting it smooth. So hopefully that makes sense. So there's a little dent right there you're using a soft block. You're going to follow the contour and not get rid of the dent. You really need something that's rigid like this. Um, if you try to do the DA like we'll be using here in a second with the interface pad, it's just going to like follow the contour. The dent won't go away. So it's a nice thing of this being high build primers that it, uh, it builds up so you can take care of imperfections. Scott said, I, when I sanded my helmet for finish, it didn't get the shine back when I polished it. On, di on what? On denim? I'm sorry, say that one more time. When I sanded my helmet for finish, it didn't get the shine back when I polished it. Um, you, you maybe need to polish it more. And, and did you 3,000 it? Make sure you 3,000 it really good. Um, but it, it sounds like you're going to need to sand it and polish it again. You really got to do that first step of polish really good. Okay, seems like we got that out most of the way. We're going to use an uh, air sander for the rest of this because, as you can hear, I'm already tired from doing that. What the heck? Catch your breath. <laughs> you do? Okay. Yeah. Uh, Rail says, what would be the best way to reactivate base coat after sitting before clearing? Um, you know... You don't, uh, you could put an inner coat clear and just dust it on. Um, but there's really no clear answer to that, what to actually do. If you let it sit in too long, maybe dusting it on. But I would also dust on anything you apply over the top. Make sure you just apply it slowly, giving it a chance to grab before piling a whole bunch on and creating a new layer. So I don't really have a clear answer on that. But uh, I would probably myself, I would sometimes even use Bulldog because Bulldog's clear. You can throw a little bulldog on there which is just adhesion promoter so yeah there's a, there's um i don't want to tell you the wrong way but there's multiple ways you can do it but just i i would say if you're worried about it do light coats of whatever it is okay another question is um can you use the guide coat on clear before more artwork uh the guide coat uh no nope Larry gave you a $20 super chat and said, thanks, Adam and Ash. Really appreciate the videos and lives. It's been difficult to catch past few weeks, but really appreciate everything. Yeah, woohoo! Thanks. thanks, Larry. The super chat. Yeah, thanks, Larry. I'm getting this other hose hooked up because for some reason my sander doesn't like that. Doesn't like that particular uh, fitting. Remember, everybody, to like this. Um, and then also in the chat, uh, hashtag time warp to be entered into a drawing to win something. And Adam has one of the new shirts on, so that might be something that you win too. That's so. probably going to be it. All right. <clears throat> okay, we're hooked up now. All is good. When you spray flake, do you carry it in intercoat clear or regular clear? Uh, and we're going to do that here in a, in a moment. And we're going to put it in 2K clear coat rather than inner coat clear. We can do it in inner coat clear tonight. Um, it's just, it's just a little more work. Like when it comes down to it, because it's going to create more texture. All right. I'm going to lay down the same 600 grit on this, uh, limeline DA sander six inch with the interface pad. You 
see how much faster that's working. Like, look at that. I mean, we're getting this thing done quick. Flushing it out with a little bit of water. Compressor is actually pretty low right now. Um, it is. I'm at, it is wide open, but I'm actually not pulling the pushing the trigger all the way down. I'm kind of mid trigger. But no, you can actually work the machine pretty slow. Sure. Uh, big guns of. Uh, yeah. Do you need a booth? Um, no, you really don't. Um, all you need is a open space to spray and a little bit of ventilation. If you're in a garage, maybe wet down the floor. Um, but no, I, I started out in my garage a long time ago. So yeah, you're good. Just make what you have work. Um, a lot of different ways to be, to you know, to make it work. Now, that was loud. Okay, I'm going to grab a sandy sponge. And I'm just going to kind of lightly go every, over everything. Just to kind of get all the sand scratches kind of smooth because right now it's all just kind of um, orbital scratches i like to just run a sanding sponge across everything you don't necessarily have to but, but you can get your your areas that, that the sander won't get into all this bottom right here you're gonna want to make sure that there's some kind of a a scratch um a scuff in that 
primer so that the paint has something to stick to. And we talked about that a little bit before in other episodes um, about how paint has basically two ways to, to adhere. It can adhere mechanically, which that's how it's going to adhere to this, or it can adhere uh, chemically, which chemically would be that one chemical is going to melt into the other chemical of ways of however the chemistry works with that. Um, with a mechanical, it's just a scratch like we're doing here. We're just putting enough scratch into it that it has enough bite for the paint to grab a hold of. If it's a slick, uh, porous, if it's an unporous surface, it has a, a harder time sticking to definitely. So make sure we add the primer. Uh, not only that, it's going to um, help from the uh, preventative rust and stuff like that as well. Do you spray the ground? Do you spray a gown? Oh my heck, sorry. Do you spray a ground coat before you flake uh, silver base and then silver flake? Yeah, so I'm actually going to use black base coat. Um, when using black base coat instead of silver or over straight over your primer, you're going to have a little bit more of a uh, a punch to the clear. It's like it's it blings a little bit more. Um, and then also it just looks more even uh, to me. So when you're playing flake over a gray or silver, it just um, it kind of misses the mark a little bit. And maybe one day we'll do a comparison and see um, exactly how much difference it is. But yeah, you can still do it that way, though. I mean, it's just everybody prefers to do it their own way. I like to flake right on top of black base coat. Pigtails out, yeah, yeah, the pigtails from the DA sander that'll happen. You don't have to worry about them too much, especially you don't need to worry about it because we're going to be flaking. Uh, we can actually get away with a lot because we're going to be laying so much texture on this thing. If it has a little bit of like the divots here and there, it's going to be covered. So we're just looking for adhesion right now. Someone said neutral detergent helps a lot to sand and remove oil from the piece oh yeah detergent yeah i think uh i think i've used something like that before i paste but really we're standing on top of primer here this is clean like i wasn't eating chicken wings earlier or nothing my hands are clean and it went from the booth to here so i think we're good Okay, get a clean rag on this. Like I said, there's still a little issue right here. Oh, I can't see it. A little bit of issue right here. Oh, that's going to be fine. Uh, we're going to get good adhesion around that. I, it's scratched in there. We're good. Um, you can fill it a little bit, but once we put some uh, flake on this, it's all going to be covered. This is just glass cleaner. We're going to use glass cleaner to clean up the sanding residue in a brand new rag here. Question, is it okay to burn through your primer a little bit or do you need to respray it if you go too hard in some spots? Um, usually when you burn through, you can use a little bit of the self-etching uh, primer in the can. That'll just, you can just spray a little bit on the, really lightly on those bare metal spots if you're worried about it. To be, be honest, if you're just a little bit of a burn through in metal, um, as far as adhesion goes, you should be all right. Um, it's still gonna bridge up over that. If, you, if it's everywhere, you, and it burns through spots everywhere, it's probably a bit better idea to go ahead and reshoot some primer on it. Block it down again. A lot of times it needs that. You know, don't be afraid to take things two times, two rounds through something. You know, if it needs two rounds of blocking and primer, uh, just do it. This could use it. If we weren't going to flake it, we would definitely reprimer this again. But flake, you get away with a lot because we're going to be adding some build to this and reblocking it back down couple more questions. Okay. Are you not going to seal it before base? Uh, no, you don't need, you can base coat right on top of this. It's ready to go. And why glass cleaner and not acetone? Uh, don't use acetone. Acetone would be like to clean like the grease and stuff off. Like if it's bare metal to start or something, you know, or wet, better yet, wax and grease remover is really what should be used. But acetone would work too. But you don't want to put acetone on top of what you got going on here. Nope. 
this is good. This is good to go. We this came out of the booth um, yesterday. I set it here, and then nobody touched it. It's not dirt, not greasy or anything. So we don't need to do anything as far as chemicals. We just need to sand it and get the sanding residue off, because the paint's not going to want to stick to sanding residue either. You know, it's like you want to make sure it's all cleaned up, all your edges. At this point, you should really be wearing gloves as well. But my hands are clean. Are they? What did we have? <laughs> did we have fajitas. Oh, yeah, fajitas. Greasy fajitas. I took a shower. Okay. All right, we're going to hang this up in the booth. What do you think about that? Yeah. Okay. You take it for a ride over here. Let's see if that works. No. Sorry, guys. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Let's switch it to low for a second. <laughs> yeah, switch. Hey, <laughs> So, yeah, we're just doing some mini trucking graphics, guys. Um, I actually painted this. This is going to be a best paint trophy for a car show at the end of the month. This side was done last night in um, heavy flake and low rider style paint. And I decided to do this side in mini trucking. Now, don't be too hard on me. This is only my second time trying mini trucking style paint. Um, but yeah, so we got some uh, yellow and green right here with a little bit of snake skin. Uh, yeah, I'm fighting the humidity as usual. But uh, yeah, using all our great Lime Line products. So get to doing some taping. Um, I did, this is the first time also that I've used uh, some of the powder pigments. Uh, I got to reduce my Intercoat Clear. I've got it, some Intercoat Clear mixed up in this here. Uh, I need to add a little more reducer. When I sprayed this piece out, I noticed my gun was spitting a little bit. Um, I do use a Iwata. Uh, I don't know which one this one is actually. Uh, it's a good one. <laughs> It's not the Neo, it's the step up from the Neo. So, all right, let's go to another one. Uh, I'm definitely fighting humidity with this tape sticking. I didn't get to clear over this uh, white like I normally would. I like to clear over it um, and then uh, wet sand it. This tape sticks a little bit better, especially in this humidity. Um, but yeah. Uh, I'm going to move away from this one because I don't know how great my paint is sticking tonight. I know this white stuck real good. So instead of trying to do this piece back here, since I had multiple pieces already done, I'm going to move over to this other side. Ooh, in the booth. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Uh, yeah. Well, I want to remind everybody, you want to make sure you're wearing your uh, PPE. Uh, what do you call this? Uh, this is this SAS. Respirator. <laughs> Come on, I'm smarter than that. Yeah, I'm gonna turn my booth on. But uh, yeah, you go ahead and keep going, though. I'm gonna. They're gonna kind of be able to see me in the booth there. All right, ten four. Don't 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 pass out in there. <laughs> I'm about to pass out from the heat, just where I'm at, man.
I want you all to see this uh, first coat. That way you can see the, the amount that I put on it for the first coat, which is pretty important. You see the amount of coverage I have there. It's just, you know, somewhere it's probably around like 20%, 30%. You want to make sure you don't oversaturate it when you first start going. Just dust the coat on. That's how base coat should be applied anyways. You shouldn't really be flooding anything on too wet. You can always do more coats. You can do 30 coats of this if you do dry coats, you know. So make sure that you're laying down your base coat similar to this for your first coat. Uh, real quick too, I'm also using the the new Limeline Pro Gun. It's a 1.4 tip, and this is the black base coat from uh, Limeline right here. Look, can't kind of messed up, but there you go. You get the point. Black base coat. You're gonna need to mix that with urethane reducer. This thins it out to make it sprayable. This evaporates once it's actually sprayed, so this doesn't stick around. This is just makes it thin enough to be able to apply it uh, smooth to the part. If you're using a gun with like a big tip, like a 1.7 or a 2.0, it's going to require you to have thicker paint so you would have less reduction. If you have a smaller tipped gun or an airbrush um, with, a, with a very small tip, it's going to cause you to have to reduce it more with the urethane reducer to make it thinner, to make it spray right. You can't spray really thick paint out of a small gun or airbrush, you know. So um, for those of you who don't know that, it was, that was kind of long-winded, but that's very important. Urethane reducer, this is used overall in a lot of different things. You can reduce your primer more. You can reduce your clear coat a little bit more. But it's definitely used all the time with base coat and um, also uh, a clear, clear, clear base coat, inner coat clear, same thing. Okay. <laughs> Woo! Couple questions. Okay. <laughs> they want to know if hard hat required with your PPE. I'm sorry, what was that? A hard hat is it required with your PPE? <laughs> Josh Tana said you sent you twenty dollars super chat sent hard hat fun. <laughs> uh I was hoping people missed that. No. Uh nobody saw it. uh yes you just have to know you won you just have to know you won so you'd have to go back and rewatch the live or somebody would have to tell you but yeah that's fine you just got to hit us up on on uh our uh in email yeah let's go ahead and do that real quick and then, hold on, hold on. okay okay um Depends on what the paint is. is it, if it's factory paint, the best thing to do would be to sand it down uh, 600 grit or 400 grit. If it has any kind of logos or decals, make sure you get those all the way out. If you do have to go down to bare metal in those spots, maybe just spot prime those areas. Um, but it would be, if it's factory paint and it's in good condition, no corrosion, you're better off sanding that, scuffing that down, and then applying over that because that way you get to save those primers, those factory primers. In like in the Harleys, they're... We can't, we can't reproduce those factory primers that they do. They're just so amazing. So we don't want to use any kind of chemical to cut those out. And also, when you're using those chemicals, there is a good chance you're not going to get them all the way off, which in like little areas and valleys and stuff like that, it's going to cause your paint to, um, to lift your brand new paint. So I, in my 20 years, I, I think when I first started, I used it. After I used it a couple of times, never again would I use paint stripper unless it's last resort. I would rather take it to a sandblaster or have them sandblast it. That, that would be a better option. I'll put another coat on this real quick. I'm gonna throw another coat real quick.
Okay. Is your food positive or negative pressure? Uh, it is a uh, negative pressure booth. It's um, what they would call a cross flow. It's coming in and then going out. So it's, it's uh, and, well, and actually I did say we we're going to talk a little bit more about the booth. But if you could see uh, right over there, there's an inlet. And on this other side, there's an inlet. Um, those... There's no, there's no air going into the booth. Only everything's getting sucked out. So um, some of the nicer booths, what they'll have is a positive pressure. That way there's not like stuff tracking through your booth. So like if you open up the door, it's like if I open the door right now, obviously particles are going to rush in there and, and go right through the parts. So they're not the, I, they're, they work just fine. I don't have a problem. Everything with custom paint, you have to cut and polish anyway. So if you have a little bit of nib here and there, that's just part of the game because you need to get rid of the orange pill anyways. So if you have a little nib of dirt, it's not the end of the world. We got to sand and polish it anyways because that's what people expect from custom paint. Unless you're just one of those guys who can lay it off the gun and get away with it. But uh, it, needs to be, it still needs to be polished, in my, in my opinion. Time. No, good question. Very good question. Um, do lighter coats require longer? No, you, we're ready right now because we laid down a pretty light coat on top of that. We're going to lay down one more coat. If I was to leave this black base coat, I would lay down another coat after the full coverage and I didn't miss anything. I actually would take a flashlight in there and shine it because you're, you'd be surprised how much it looks like you've covered it and you really didn't. However, we're going to be metal flaking this. It's not going to really matter that much. Um, we just need to get it close to full coverage, and that's going to be good enough. There's no reason to overbuild a paint that we're, we don't need. So, But if this was stained black base coat, we definitely would want to pound more and do more coats of, of black on top of this. But we don't have to. One more coat. Uh, the new gun just comes with a 1.4, or you can, or the uh, the regular version comes with a 1.3. Um, all the flakes, the, the flakes that we sell, everything we sell does spray out of a 1.3 uh, or 1.4. The only time you would use a 1.7 if you're spraying like um, glass, uh, the uh, crushed glass, or you had like a thick body filler primer, primer body filler. Um, sometimes people like to spray regular primer surfacer out of a bigger gun and that's fine, but I feel like you can just reduce the primer a little bit, still use your one four and you'll get better results. So I always use the one four all the way around. The only time I use the one seven, it would be, and I wouldn't go higher than one seven, um, would be for the glass. Other than that, it's, you're getting some, you're getting a lot of material on it once. And a lot of times we're building that fast, that thick you can have some problems with adhesion. So keeping coats thinner, if you can if you can side with thinner, do it because you're gonna have better results with that. Question? Yeah, I'll take another one. Do you normally paint your things not on the stand? Um I usually hang them. I like them on the stand too. Depends on what it is. The new gun is on Amazon. Yep. 
The new gun's on Amazon. You can check it out there. Uh, you can just search Lime Line uh, paint gun or 1.4 paint gun. You should be able to find it there. All right, I did want to show you guys how to mix the flake. Oh. <laughs> okay. I'm mixing up some flake. I'll drop a cup in. So we've got a disposable cup here. Now, there's two ways you can do this. Uh, some people use intercoat clear, clear base coat. You can mix the flake. You can mix the flake straight into the clear base coat, reduce it and spray it on. That's fine. The one downfall to that is when it sprays on, it creates more texture than if you were to use a 2K clear coat. But it does allow you to spray the flake with less chance of it running. So there's kind of a give and take with that. You use the inner coat clear, you're going to have a little more texture. If you use the clear coat all the way through, you're going to have, it's going to stay wet longer, but it's going to lay smoother. So we're going to use clear coat because I feel like it's better just to use clear coat anyways, because that way your 2K hardened all the way through your clear coat. Oh yeah, all the way through the metal plate. Actually, on this, maybe we'll do that. You're up. <laughs> okay, we're gonna clip. There we go. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and take the part A clear coat, and we're going to mix up. This is a two to one mixture. Let's take it over here. We're going to mix up. We got four ounces there. That should do it. We don't need much. Four ounces of part A. And then we need, so a two to one. So we have four ounce, we need two ounces of the hardener. Perfect. <laughs> so no it's not that bad yeah so it's right on the cup go to the four go to the two now you got six it makes it up because right, usually you'd mix this up uh but we're okay so we got the front we got the metal flake here i've already used this once before because we don't need to use the whole packet but this is designed to mix with one pack with one pint we're not mixing a whole pint here, so we're just going to just mix some in there. No. Maybe like maybe like that much. Yeah, I'll move on. Okay. There's the map. <laughs> yep. Okay, one thing that's really important with these is you're gonna to want to pull this filter out because what's gonna happen is it's all gonna pile there and you're gonna wonder why you're not getting any flake out. It's all gonna be piling right in there, hitting that filter. Pull that guy out of there. Okay. Yeah, always remove the filters. Only. No, only the filters, yeah. Make sure we shake that up because we didn't stir up that clear coat. You can always just shake it up in there. Oh, that'll work. I didn't know how to do that. 
Uh, you would need a whole packet for a hood, most likely. Depends on how much flake you want on it. Take you on a ride. There we go. All right, let's go ahead and uh, I'll, I'll put a coat on this real quick. And then we can go ahead and do a giveaway. How's that sound? Okay. okay so we have the Lime Line in the 1.4 Pro spray gun right here. Uh, we do have the filter taken out. We're going to hook it up. And uh, let's see what it looks like. Yes, that is the new gun, and I am testing another water trap. That's what this other water trap is. Um, we do have this normal one. That's what I usually run, but I am testing these disposables as another one. Um, but we're going to give it another. These should last at least a month or something. I don't know. Once I feel comfortable that they work as good as the competitors, then. Um, but so far, so good. Like, this stuff is actually pretty hard shell. I want to get them in green like a green would be a better look um but yeah these work too these are actually more reusable than disposable because they do have the the water um, trap drain so you saw how you guys saw how thin um i sprayed that i sprayed it pretty thin that means we're able to go back into the booth pretty quick to put another coat on but first we're going to Hopefully spin the wheel and somebody's gonna win something. Let's see if this thing works, huh? So if you guys haven't done it yet, if you guys are just clicking on, um, you can hashtag time warp in the comments. It's automatically going to put you in to the wheel to, uh, and we will give away, to start out, we'll give away one of the, these party shirts that I'm wearing here. Ooh la la. We'll show them a little bit later. Oh, there we go. Somebody will win one of those. You just got to email us. She'll give you the email. It'll be in the chat. Um, and then you got to let us know that you won and then let us know what size you need.
Okay, guys, we're going to go ahead and draw for the, uh, the time warp. All you got to do is type in that hashtag in the description. It looks like we have. Yeah, okay, there we go. If you guys haven't done it for a minute, go ahead and hit that again. All right, guys, ready? Okay, get in the last year. If you could only vote once, it's only going to allow you to do it once. Um, but yeah, let's uh, let's get on it. We're ready for another coat. We, we'll give away more giveaways too. So let's. Customs. Dang, that's so cool. All right, you're the winner. Misfit Ranch Customs. Hit us up on the uh, email address. So type it in right now. Let us know your size and we'll get you a work party shirt. Not the one I'm wearing, though. That'll be extra if you want that. We will do some more. I'm gonna take you back into the booth and we're gonna do another coat of flake real quick. So move in there. All right. Take you guys in to see that coat real quick. Like I was saying earlier, since we're using clear coat, it's 
has, uh, it stays wet longer, allowing the metal flake to lay smoother. When you're using Intercoat Clear, it's flashing off really quick and it's drying fast. So all those flakes are laying at different angles, causing a rough texture. You, a couple, you could pat it down a little bit if you want. I don't necessarily, I don't think that's the best way, but I like to spray it on just for the fact that it does go on smoother and you don't have to bury so much clear coat on top of this in order to get it smoothed out. And we still need a layer of three to four coats on this, but even after the three, four coats, if we already use the inner coat to, to mix in with the metal flake, you would have to sand it smooth and re-clear it again uh, before actually doing the graphics. So this doing it this way, I feel like it does take a, a step out of it. And it also, the uh, metal flake is suspended inside 2K clear coat, which is a better option if you ask me to have that um, chemically hardened all the way through rather than having it suspended in a clear base coat or inner coat. All right, we good? Let's check in with um, Lo. How's he doing? Going on. I, oh, there you go. There you go. Yeah, I'm man. Here, now, now I can hear you. How yeah, things over there it. so far? Man, it's going good. Uh, like I say, this is really the first time I've used this, uh, your powders, pigments, and uh, it's it's a little learning curve. I've, I've had to, you know, play with the ratios as far as uh, – you know, intercoat clear and then and and then reducing a little bit to, to get my fades and things like that. But man, I'm loving it, man. This these uh nineties uh neon colors are amazing for these mini truck and graphics, man. Stuff's amazing. Yeah. Um they uh yeah, they're they really are. And it, and it does take a little bit in order to get the mixture together. Did you remember to strain those strain the paint before you put it in your airbrush or did you not have a problem with that no i had, had i haven't had a problem with it okay so if you if you notice any kind of like plugging or anything like that it didn't come with those couple of filters you can always um thin it out and strain it through that and sometimes yeah. i've noticed that sometimes too that if you don't get it mixed up really good sometimes you have some blockage issues with the airbrush right yeah i'm just kind of over reducing it right now because i am going over white so you can pretty much over reduce when going over white pretty good you know especially for these mini truck and graphics they're they're uh it's all texture so it doesn't have to be perfect you know textures don't have to be you know crisp edges you know you want you want your your designs to have crisp edges but as far as your texture i mean it doesn't have to be beautiful no i mean you can make a lot of errors and a lot of mistakes with mini truck paint and then just make it work because yeah. like you said there's yeah. so much paint splatter you can literally like uh pull your paint and make it work somehow some way oh uh, yeah, that's that's sure. a cool thing about that is you can always kind of hide your your errors and a lot of it's just like making those errors like spraying down you know uh you know we'll do the polish trick where you put a little bit of csi polish and then fade and fade some a darker color over that and then wipe it off or using right. the the trick with the glass cleaner Yep. You know, yep. glass cleaner. You let that kind of beat up, spray that on there, let that beat up, hit it. Say like you have a gold or a yellow underneath, a bright yellow. Uh, put that glass cleaner on there, let it kind of beat up for a second and then hit it with an orange or something and then wipe that off. It looks cool. Like I have a so video I'm, actually coming out showing a lot of those. So I'm about to do, so I'm doing orange. I, I don't know if you can see my, I don't know if you can see my screen um, where you're at, but I'm doing orange. I got the 90s orange down. So should I go, I'm going to do, um, uh, the honeycomb. So should I use light blue or reg just just the normal blue? The darker blue. Uh, what would you use on top of the orange? On top of the orange. Um, you know, I would probably go with the lighter. The lighter? Okay, with the bright I would blue. go with the lighter. Blue. Yeah, because um Yeah, I to be honest with you, I think the when you I don't know for a fact, 
but I think when you spray that on, it's going to be like a brownish color. Oh, okay, cool. Maybe, cool. maybe I might be wrong. I want you to do it. It might yeah, actually I'll might be. A, it. it actually might be a purple because I want to see. I'm very, very curious. Um, okay, cool. But I'm hey, guessing quick. it would turn out to be a dark purple or a brown. Let's see. Yeah, let's. I can't okay. wait to see that. Uh, another quick question. So when when you had the um, the drip that you were you were sanding out. Have you ever heard of and or used the flat razor blade method to get runs out? Um, I have. And you know what? The first time I actually did that was just recently. Yeah. 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 Um, and I do that when it comes to clear coat. But I don't know why I didn't do it in this case. Actually, yeah. Yeah. On clear. I've never used it on like base coats or nothing like that. But Yeah. Uh, well, usually base coat uh, wouldn't run like that. Like, but that is a thick. But yeah, yeah. I have. I have done that. You use that technique. Yeah, so I'll explain to the viewers real quick. So you have a flat blade. The best thing to do is to score it on the concrete and get your edges flat. And then literally just put the, the blade on the run and just scrape it. You can also put tape around the run if you wanted to. But you literally just flat scrape it like that and it'll scrape it away. And you, you can get a lot of the run completely out. And then come in and just finish sanding it off but yeah so you just want to see just your edges just kind of scrape them along the concrete because the edges will dig into your paint that's why you want to scrape those edges and once you find the center of it just you know apply some pressure until it starts scraping and just but your clear also has to be good and hardened too it can't be soft clear which you can't sand soft clear either so <laughs> yeah yeah it has to be it has to be really hard so it, usually a couple days wait on that if you're wanting to do yeah. that method um but it is it actually seems like a dangerous method but it's it's not it's really not it right no nope. yeah because yeah. you're because you're literally just taking off where you need to because when you're sanding you're trying to get that run out and you're sanding all around the run too a little bit like here and yeah. there even though you don't think you are and you'll end up burning through i do every time that's why when a buddy of mine told me about it i was like what Nah, dude, I don't. I ain't taking no razor blade to my clear. And then he come over and showed me how to do it, and I was like, dude, that's that's the ticket right there. <laughs> yeah, that, it really is. And that's funny you mentioned that because I just barely actually done that after knowing it for years, but never had the. <laughs> and then I'm like, oh damn, it does work, you know. So I would have <laughs> a, a lot more knowledge on that. We do have a. Yeah. Did you see that question on the screen? Somebody asked, uh, oh, what's the carrier you're using for the pigments? Oh, so I, I have it. It's it's in a Createx bottle, but that's not what it is. I'm actually using um, uh, Tamco's Intercoat Clear and Reducer right now. I do have Lime Line, oh. but I'm not using my Lime. Oh, hang on, hang on. Sorry about that. I'm not uh, I'm not using my Lime Line stuff until I run out the run out of the rest of the stuff I already have. Oh, I got gotcha. you. No reason to. <laughs> Open up a freshie, right? Just because you know, right. something open. Yeah. Right. But and yeah, that, so and, you know what? right now. Yeah, and a lot of this stuff, like these pigments are universal in most cases. Um, I know a lot of people preach not to mix brands together. Um, and that's definitely the, the case. That's definitely the case when it comes to something that has a part A and a part B. Yeah. Like you're not yes. gonna yeah, you're not gonna put that you're not gonna put somebody else's hardener in your clear coat. Right. That's just not gonna Correct. that's not gonna work out. And, I, and if you can, and I agree, if you if you can stick to the same brand, go ahead and do so. But yes. we're breaking all kinds of rules all, everywhere. <laughs> we're custom painters. Yeah. We break all the rules when it comes to paint. Yeah. So that's one of them we, we break all the time. Because oh, a lot of yeah, times you man. can't get this stuff. You know, it's just, and we and we, we know, I, I know it works, um, but it's all up to you. If, you. if you're one of those guys that want to go straight all the way through the same product, that, that's fine too. That's probably the way to do it. Yeah, just buy all Limeline and you'll be okay. Yeah, it looks like we've got a super chat coming in. Uh, gonna show that. Yeah, hit that show button. Thank you so much, Ryle. I, I can't say, I can't read. I appreciate that super chat coming in. We'll make sure that that, uh, another, one. another one from Isaac. Thank you so much. Another super chat. But that's looking great, dude. Um, fantastic. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. Appreciate I, I it. like the pur I like the pink and the purple together. That pops. Really yeah. Good. Did you? So when you laid down your um, fine line tape on top of your white, 
Yeah. Um, you know how sometimes when you go to mask stuff off and then you go to pull it and then like the your your guide tapes come off and you actually kind of sometimes want to leave them on. Well, um, what I've what I've done and I don't know if you've done this, but like what I'll do is once I if I'm laying down graphics on top of white is I'll take a, a light gray that's almost white and I'll register all the lines. Oh, like just yeah. Of, OK. OK. So if yeah. You, so if, they, if you accidentally pull a line and you don't know exactly where it went, there is a right. light like, you know what I mean? So it just it's so it just registers everything up and it won't have it's it's not as it's not too much of a shade change that would affect your color. You know what I mean? Right, like, right. Yeah. You're, you're, you're putting a pretty pigmented color on top of it. And this is only for if you're doing pigments and not candies. That probably wouldn't work with candies right, yeah. as well. Yeah, Same kind candies. of concept. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I have to remember that next time. That way, like you say, it registers all your lines for you. Yep. Learn something new every day. Uh-huh. Okay, we're ready for another coat. We're going to split screen it here. Looks like you got some honeycombs ready to go. That yeah, awesome. man. All right, we're going to keep an eye on you. <laughs> all right, let's put another coat of flake on this. Probably the last coat. All right, looking pretty good. Um, I like the coverage. Uh, we couldn't do another coat if we wanted to, but I think we're gonna be okay with what we got. So um, I'm gonna, gonna give that like another 10 minutes. I do need to mix up some regular clear coat. So like I said, when I mixed that, that clear coat up, the metal flake up, it was in 2K clear coat and we're gonna keep going with the same clear coat. So it's like the dry times are gonna be all the same. Um, once we get this next, coat of clear and we start going a little bit wet, wetter. Um, I'll show you how to test the clear coat to see if you're ready for another coat rather than relying on times and stuff like that. But there's certain methods you can do to that. Uh, but yeah, so far so good. Let's tune back into, uh, I'm going to go ahead and clean my gun. I'm going to use the same gun. I'm just going to clean it up, put a new cup in it, mix up some of the 2K clear coat part a part b just like i did before and then um we'll get ready to shoot some clear coat on this but yeah let's go ahead and switch back to my correspondent over there that's painting some honeycomb looks like tell you what color it came out to be but uh all right you're on yeah i had a little overspray there Dang, <laughs> a little under spray. Got to make sure your stencils are down all the way, Phyllis. It'll be all right. Oh, yeah, you'll be fine. So you're using the – oh, nice. Okay, so you're using the positive on one side. Is that what that is? Or no, no. Yeah. No, no, this is the negative is side. Laid down. This is sprayed. Okay. Yep. Gotcha.
sure this one's all the way down. Um, if it's on Sportster gas tanks like this, I would uh, usually always flake the bottom. But you don't have to. It's all preference. But I do. Uh, yeah, kinda. You can make it run. You don't want it to run. Don't mind the effect, actually. So candy, candy concentrate goes into um, clear base coat or inner coat clear. It does not go into 2K clear coat. It's not designed for that. Although it could work, um, not recommended for anything that we're doing with custom paint. All right, not too bad. Let's see, Not too shabby. Oh uh, yeah, okay. I kind of like the mess ups, so it'll be all right. Yeah, you're all right. So, uh, yeah, I can't wait to see it. Um, someone said that mistakes that look in Mitchell aren't really that's right. That's right. Okay. We, uh, we should never give it another giveaway, huh? Let's see. Giveaway. Go back to that. Let's see what uh, see what the whole school says. Oh, we got fifty entries, so your entry is still good. If you guys have already entered, we have fifty entries. Um, so let's go ahead and do it. Got five more minutes before I can put more clear coat on this. So let's. If you guys haven't put in the hashtag time warp yet, go ahead and do so now. Looks like we got 50 entries. Hopefully that works. It says 50. Exactly. Okay, so we're going to go with the, um, a tri-pack. We're going to go with the... I wish I had an example here. Somebody's going to win the tri-pack of candies, which is going to come with the red, the blue, and the gold candy. All you have to do is hashtag time warp. You, you do need to be in the U.S. or Canada. And um, you do have to email us and let us know that you won, and we will verify that. But okay, good luck, guys. Still say 50? Okay, 54. Okay, let's do it. Daniel Garcia. All right, man. Okay, so all you have to do is... Uh, info at limeline.com. Let us know that you won, Daniel Garcia. And we will get your tri pack of candies out to you. But we'll do it, we'll do it some more. We're gonna give another shirt away too, for sure. All right, let's go in for code of clear coat real quick, huh? Uh, actually, so you can see the texture. Like if you look at the, if you look at the reflection of the light, I mean, you can really see how much texture that that flake has laid out, but it's not as bad as if you were to spray this 
using inner coat clear or clear base coat. That's going to dry faster, causing it to have more texture, making you have to lay out more clear coat to be able to cover it. Because when you start the graphics, you need to have a pretty smooth surface to start on because it needs to be sanded. Once it's dry, it needs to be sanded and then you're ready to go with the tape as long as it's smooth enough. If it's still rough and textured, scuff it down, sand it down, put it back in, clear coat it again, and then wait till the next day, sand it, and then you should be smooth enough to be able to start the graphics on. But if it's a rough texture like this, your tape is gonna have a hard time uh, applying to a surface that is really textured. So um, it takes some time and some patience to make sure that you're laying out enough clear coat to be able to sand it down without burning through um, to, to get this surface smooth enough. So go ahead and Yeah, you just gotta plug in another one. You're good. Okay. <laughs> no battery. Uh, yeah, you were panicking. I was panicking in there because my respirator strap broke and I had to hold my breath. Whew. Okay, so I put another coat on that. We're gonna give it another, uh, um, I sprayed that kind of wet. We better give it like 10 minutes, maybe seven minutes or something. Someone says, what filters are you using on the mask? Uh, so this is just a NIOSH approved mask, which I need to fix this thing. Strap came off or something. I don't know what happened here. It's a, just a NIOSH approved. That's what you're going to want to get. Does this thing break? Are you spraying the 2K clear over it or is that only for metal? 2K clear coat over the top. We've been using 2K clear coat all the way through. We mixed the metal flake into the 2K clear coat and sprayed it over black base coat. Once we got our, the coverage that we wanted with the metal flake, we went ahead and uh, applied. This is our first coat of regular clear coat over the top. So it's starting to actually smooth out right now. Um, we'll do another two coats, giving it like roughly 10 minutes in between coats. Um, I'll show you here in a minute how to check that uh but just like a little test but um and then yeah so then it's been 2k clear coat all the way through the process on top of the black base coat so i feel like that's a better way because it's like i was mentioned many times before it smooths the surface out faster using 2k clear coat all the way through and it also very importantly it um it's chemically hardened all the way through your metal flake rather than having your metal flake suspended in clear base coat which is not chemically hardened so it's not as durable so you know but you can do it both ways it's, it works both ways so okay so rolls of the filter material for the booth um yeah i do actually i think i do buy those off of amazon um i it's been so long i just buy it off of the roll I have no idea. I have no idea. The, you know what, to be honest with you, the inlet filters are actually exiting filters. So it's not even the right stuff. And uh, yeah, maybe if we have a second, I'll kind of show you through the booth too. Show you how I, it, you know, it's not perfect. There's none of this is perfect. Like people are definitely going to dog on that because, because you should have inlet filters that are um, thinner. They should, they should, or not thinner, they should, 
uh, they should catch more than what those are doing. But that does pretty good. So once again, with custom painting, we cut and buff everything. So. Another question? Go ahead. Oh. Uh, um yeah you could yeah john you could just go black base coat with underneath the thing is you're gonna have to you're gonna have overspray of flake to be honest i would probably flake it and then leave it silver flaked because that way it's going to look all nice and because the nice thing about flake is it it looks like it looks good even if it does have orange bill so i'd probably still flake it even if i didn't plan on painting it but i do plan on painting under that too, because I just think that's cool. Okay. So yeah. Can I answer that? We got another one. Um, why does House of Color have so many different types of clear? It's super confusing to the layman. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know anything about House of Color anymore. Uh, but yeah, they do have different stuff and lots of part numbers. Confusing to most of us. Uh, carport. Hey, carport. You said that looks uh, navy gray. Navy, navy gray. It actually, looks kind of green. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay, let's go ahead and click to him. You want to go ahead and put him? Is that the last of the? Yeah. We're gonna go ahead and tune into carport and see how these is coming along. What's up, guys? Ah, there we are. Oh, oh there we go. There we go. Uh, now I'm getting a good view What's here. What's up, guys? So, so, yeah, that turned out that turned out kind of like navy. Great. Yeah, man. it's cool. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. That, that definitely, you could, you could have done anything on that. It would have been, it would have been completely different. Yeah, for sure. So my purple, I don't know if you can see over here. I don't know uh -huh. what happened. My purple was like real dry sprayed. So I did a I did a tape test to see if it was gonna pull it, and it it's dusty, so it it pulled it off. But eh, it's a cool effect. I'll fix it. It pulled off. It, oh, so it had a little bit of texture there when you sprayed it. Yeah, so it's like dry. Like it it if I rub it with my finger, like it it's like it turned it back into powder. So I don't know huh. if I just dry sprayed it. The, like I say, right now, man, out here, the humidity is killing me right now. So, wow, not all of us are lucky to uh, live in the land of great weather and have paint boots, you know. <laughs> but I, I highly doubt my I'm paint little jelly is, right now. My paint booth is not uh, filtering out anything besides like big stuff. You know, maybe I'll show that. Like I said, I, I did promise some people I was going to show a little bit more on the booth of how it was built. Mm -hmm. And it's nothing of professional grade, but it works for me. And I and it um, it's a good option for people. But or at um, least you have a booth. I'm, I'm out here under the carport, okay? So Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but you're making it work, though. You're making it work. Hey, man. That's what it's all about, man. You know, you got to get out there and try it. And, you know, you're going to win some, you're going to lose some, but... You know, you, you never know if you don't get out there and just, just do it, man. Put your hands on it. Mess some stuff up, you know. Um, yep. That's my yep. philosophy, man. You never yep. know your potential unless you try it, man. That's that's, that's the biggest big thing. Let's well, just try. It's, it's just up from there, really. I mean, having these little errors, and you can see it when I'm live, I'll have little errors, too. You know, my paint might kill, but we we always end up making it work. And if it doesn't work in that particular layer – you can always re-clear it, sand it down, and you can address that problem in the next layer. And a lot right. of times when it, when it comes to like, when it comes to people's motorcycle parts and stuff like that, it's like you almost need a, a whole layer there to be able to, depending on the paint job and how complex the graphics are. But sometimes you just need that uh, extra layer to fix problems all at once, you know, and to like clean up edges and stuff like that. And then, and then you're able to, um, hit it with like three more coats of like a final clear and then it just it just glosses right out 
So a lot right. of people don't, a lot of people think that it needs to be done in one shot. You know, if, if stuff goes wrong, say like you have like multiple errors on this, which is kind of expected because with, you know, as much masking as you do with mini truck graphics, it's like there's more potential for things to go wrong, you know, especially when oh, you're yeah, over, overlapping, overlapping with wild colors from, you know, from blue all the way to, to yellow. There's lots of chances for overspray and, and stuff like that. But um, having that layer, clear coating something and then having that layer to fix things up to clear coat it again. I always find that that's the way to get out of it, you know. Got the yes, layer to I'm screw up gonna, at first and then, then, then go on from there. So this one, I'm just, I'm keeping it white back there. And I'm actually going to sit here with this stencil and I'm going to layer all the colors that I have on here. I'm going to layer them all in this one graphic. Oh, wow. Okay. I like yeah, it. I'm trying to like, <laughs> like pile them on top of each other, you know, because it's just paint, paint splatter. So yeah, let's yeah. make it look like a bunch of paint splattered, you know. Very interesting. I like it. I like it. Pushing the limits. Yeah, yeah, push the literally. limits, man. Yeah. And literally, if you, like, like, even if you didn't know what you were doing, like, say you, you were to spray the blue and end up liking the blue, say, oh, I'll, maybe I'll just do blue on this. You could just fade the edges, and then you have a nice, cool blue-white effect. But, um, right, yeah, right. Once, once again, overlapping these, it's going to be very, very interesting. Nothing that I've done before. So we're going to find out. You're going to find out. I guess they don't be scared, man. Just do it. Just do it. Yep. Yeah. We'll go ahead and answer another question here. Uh, what color blue would you say your candy blue is close to? Um, so it'd be candy bright blue is what it would be in like a of color. It'd be, it'd be, a, it wouldn't be a cobalt. It would be, if you wanted cobalt blue, you would take the blue and you would just add just a little bit of red. Not enough red to make it purple, but enough red to make it cobalt blue. So you can always mix those colors. Uh, would you do color metal flake in a similar fashion? Okay, the, the reason why I personally don't do colored metal flake is because um, if you when you're sanding the clear coat to smooth it out once the clear coat is applied and it's all dry and everything and you're sanding it smooth if you sand into those flakes which I promise you you will because there's some that still stick up you're going to knock the, the color right off about those flakes so you're gonna have a bunch of say like you had red flake you're gonna have a bunch of uh, silver specks all over and you're gonna need to address those somehow so that's why I always stick with going, either going with silver or gold, but even then it's not gonna make that big of a difference. I stick with silver flake and then I use the candies over the top. Yep. Just make them the color you want. Make them the color you want. So if you want a candy gold or you want a gold metal flake, you would just, you say you wanted an all gold metal flake, you would just lay down the silver metal flake and then you would candy gold over it and then clear coat it if you just wanted the whole thing gold or if you wanted a portion gold or whatever. So, yeah, but you, you can obviously layer graphics, do different colors, different shades. Yeah, just experiment, just like, just like you're doing. Yes, indeed. We're going to throw some yellow down now on top of this blue and see what happens. Uh, Roman A has a question. Is it pretty common in the custom paint world to work in layers, or is that a system you developed for yourself? Um, I don't think I – I know I didn't make that up. Um, <laughs> it's not really taught. It's not really taught in the automotive world. Like, I, I did go to uh, a collision school where I learned automotive collision and stuff like that, and it's not taught there. But it's, I guess, it's just one of those things you figure out. Like, oh, I can always do more. You know, I mean, there is a limit, but is there a limit? <laughs> it's like how right. much clear you want. I mean, I mean, it's safer, in my opinion. It's it's safer to put down four coats of clear sand it down smooth you know do your touch-ups or whatever or even not do the touch-ups you don't have any and then re-clear at that point that way you're stacking them on top you just need to make sure you give your clear coat enough time in between to make sure that um you know the solvents are have can evaporate could have could run into some issues with, with issues with solvent pop and other stuff like that but you know find your find what works for you um all environments are going to be different
Oh, Austin says the tape is covering the tip of the design. Oh, yeah, a little bit. Oh, oh yeah, sure is. Good eye, good eye. <laughs> I used to give away prizes for that, but then everybody started critiquing my work too much. <laughs> <laughs> like, if you find an error, no, if they find a huge error, I'll actually give them something. But, uh, yeah, after that, it's like I started getting comments in the message like, Two months later, says, "Hey man, I saw something on there. Do I get something?" I'm like, "No, that was no, a long time no, ago." No. Yeah. Okay, we got another question here. Um, I've tried to over thin white base coats who act like a candy for spraying over metal flake, or is there a better way? Um, yeah, that's not gonna. I can see why you're not happy with the results because it really doesn't work that way. Um, pigmented paints don't act the same as candies. They're not. They're a pigment. They're made to cover. Candies are transparent in nature, so they will uh, be transparent. So there really isn't, unfortunately, there's not a white candy. There is a black candy. There's it's like no. A Jolly Rancher compared to Taffy. A taffy. Jolly Rancher and yes. Taffy. Yeah. Well, that's, that's a the very good analogy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so there you go. But yeah, so that's, um, I can see why that didn't work. You, you might need to try something else. Maybe switch up your design a little bit. If you need help, you can you can hit me up on Instagram. I can maybe see what you got. Swampy, is there a limit to the color spectrum? <laughs> I don't know. Let me uh, let me ask Google real quick. Is there a limit? Well, yeah, I'm sure there's a no. Is it infinity? No, there's only so many colors you can mix and shades. Yeah, but no, I'm just guessing. Black. Yeah. But I'm gonna I'm gonna Google that one later. Ask Chat GPT on that one. All right, I'm ready for another coat of clear on this. Uh, let me. Yeah, yeah, I think I am. Do a drawing. Are you wait? Let's go ahead and I'll go ahead and spray this, and we'll do a drawing. All right, we're gonna get we're gonna do another drawing, but uh, first I'm gonna take you into the booth. And we're going to put another coat of clear on this. All right, if you guys haven't yet, you can do hashtag time warp in the comments and that will enter you in to win. Carport don't have to worry about, uh, you don't have to worry about entering, man. I got you one of these shirts coming, maybe tomorrow. I appreciate it though. Hey, what you size are you, by the way? What size, uh, what size? Extra large, extra large. Oh, he knows. He don't care. Guys don't care what size he is. You extra large or you're about my size, yeah. right? XL, XL. Yeah, they don't they don't shrink either, so awesome. super nice. I don't think they do, right? They're not shrink, they don't shrink. They're not cotton. Okay, let's give something away. We'll give away one question before Okay, one question. Are you supposed to treat the pigments like single stage paint? I mean, obviously we clear over it. Yep. But in a, the way you mix it, can you mix it with clear? So you mix it with, you mix this with clear base coat or inner coat clear. And it's, 
it's not a single stage paint because what a single stage paint is, is it's a clear coat with color. So if you did want to make it a single stage, you would you could mix this pigment into clear coat and spray it, but it's going to act like a clear coat. It's going to take longer to dry. Um, it's going to build thickness. It's going to lay out flat. And those are all base coats, something the base coats don't do. Base coats aren't designed to uh, build or anything like that, or even to really spray um, really thick. It's, it goes on fairly thin compared to anything else. So, but you could mix it as a 2K, um, but not probably wouldn't be desirable to do that. Not at least on custom paint. I, it, you'd be better off inner coat clear base, clear base coat, and then 2K on top, like you're thinking. All right, let's uh, we'll give something away. We are we're giving away a shirt. Uh oh. What? Oh, draw again. Okay. Kevin McCain. Look at that. Watching on YouTube. Thank you. You won. So just let us know your size on the email address provided info at limelinepaintsupply.com and we will get your shirt out to you. Okay, and then Tommy said, so he had the question about the, is there a limit to the color spectrum he meant when layering? Oh, um, you, you don't want to layer more paint than you have to. Sometimes you just have to do more. So you do more. But if you don't have to, then don't. Because you want to try to keep your paint thickness as thin as possible. But then you also have to be able to stack it up to make it nice enough to smooth it out and provide enough protection, UV protection and whatnot. But yeah, so, and then also if you were to layer more candies on top of, it will eventually turn pretty dark. So, so I don't know if it's, maybe that's a, the question too, but hopefully I answered that for you, Swampy. I'm gonna go show you real quick while I got you. All right, a way that I check to see if we need another coat on this or not is by doing the touch test with your finger. So you want to touch it in a spot where you're not going to see it, obviously. This is tape right here. So I'm going to go ahead and touch this. And I'm going to take a look at it. And see how it's stringing up? Oh, there's a good one. Okay, so since it's strung up, that means it's not ready yet. We still gotta, we gotta give it a little more time to, uh, to dry because it probably won't even be that long, probably another five minutes. But if, how do you know if it's ready or not when you touch it and it's tacky, but it doesn't string up like that, you know, like string up, then you're good to go for another coat. But if it's, stringing up you gotta wait you gotta wait a little bit longer that's a way to check it because you don't really know the time with humidity and heat and all the other stuff so but um okay so i did want to kind of show you a little bit about the booth um basically it's just a room that is drywalled off i put a i found this commercial glass door i had it for a couple of years i've decided oh yeah i found it used so I thought, oh, that's way better than a, like a regular door. This just looks, I don't know. And then we framed out the, these right here. And I think what we did is we made these, uh, we made these removable. So you can actually pull the frame of this out. These grates are, what are they used for? Like displays. 
on like shirt displays or any kind of rack display, a wall rack display. You can find them on Amazon and then I just cut it down to size. So I think when I bought it, I think it was this size when I bought it and then I framed it out to that size. So an inlet filter there, an inlet filter there, and then there's the exhaust there, which we'll look a little bit into that. But once again, these aren't like, this boost not built to be professional or anything like that. These filters should be like the tacky sticky ones and they should filter out finer materials than what this does. But this is better than I, what I've ever had and I get really clean paint jobs. I don't even wet the floor in here. Um, I get pretty dang clean paint jobs out of here. So got one over here, one over there, door in the middle, just framed it in. So another thing with the lighting, let me see if I can get a better. Okay, so this lighting is just an LED strip that's in a plastic tube. These things are freaking awesome because they're super cheap. You can get them on Amazon. I think you can buy like a 12 pack and they end up being like $12 a piece or something like that. But the nice thing about these is they, once they get dirty, you just replace them with another one. You just kind of just throw them out because they're super cheap. You can replace them for 12 bucks. And they're not like, they're low, like they're LEDs. So it's not gonna suck a whole bunch of power. They're, you don't have to worry about paint fumes or anything like that. Uh, so I do have, I have the one there, one there. So two on each side of the wall, same here. And then on the ceiling I have two. So it seems like what I have, eight in here total and it's pretty bright it looks dark in here but yeah. and then i did uh mount those just those eye hooks up in there the is the booth heated the booth is not heated it's just whatever it's inside a shop that is heated but it's not actually heated itself there's no forced air into this this pulls the air out there is no forced air in. That's just allowing air to come in through those filters. But I'm sure air is still kind of like seeping in other areas. Are the lights C95 plus CRI? Now, no, they're not. They're LEDs. Back in the days when there was a big deal with lighting inside booths, it's mostly it's because they were the, the methods that they used when they were cleaning the paint pots and all that stuff. It, it made it dangerous and flammable. The, the, today, nowadays with the paints and the way we do stuff, it's not, you, it's not something that you're going to really have to worry about. Um, these, these are just fine. We're not going to put out any kind of a electricity that's gonna blow you up, as far as I know. So do what you want. You can buy those lights. Do you recommend uh, an inflatable booth? I actually do. And, um, Maybe I'll talk about that a little bit after I get finished with this. I will talk about inflatable boost. But this, basically, we just framed a box out. Uh, once again, use the same kind of grate that we got on Amazon. And then we're using the same kind of filter. So inside of this is the, I don't want to pull this all, all apart because we're clearing in there, in here. But in here, there is a 12-inch fan, tubular fan. But the, the important thing is, is the motor is on the outside. So the belt actually runs through the round casing. That way the motor is not exposed to the paint coming through it. So if you're using a, a regular fan that has the motor like in the middle and then the fan around it, well, all that paint dust and all that is, is going to gather up and it's going to end up overheating that motor. It's going to blow up your motor. So you need to find the ones that have the fan that has the belt on it. And then there's like a couple of holes on the edge of the round tube. And it, that's where the motor's at. It's actually on the outside. And one day I can show you the back side of this um, and see how that actually works. But that's how that is. Yeah. Somebody did mention inflatable boosts. Okay. this. Somebody did ask what size this booth is. It's a 14 by 12. 
But uh, somebody did mention inflatable boost. If I was to do it over again, there's a pretty good chance I would probably just buy an inflatable boost. Um, I was, I feel like they're easier, cheaper, and then if you ever had to take it down for any reason, you could just take it down. Um, I would. There's straps on the top of inflatables so where you can like hang them from the ceiling, so you could turn the power off without them actually collapsing. That's probably what I would do if I was to do it over. Uh, what size would you recommend for your optimal size of booth? Oh, depends on what you're painting. Um, I have the 12 by 12, I think. Yes, 12 by 12 foot. I would get one that's a little bit bigger than that. If you're painting cars, you're going to need one that's a lot bigger than that. But yeah, it's, it's all it's all what you're painting. But get bigger than 12 by 12 unless you're painting chopper parts or skateboards. With it. Let's go check this clear coat. Let's do the finger test. Still sticky. Needs one more coat. Still sticky though. We're gonna have to give it another five, ten minutes. We'll go back to we got another question. Let's go to right there. Is he still there? Let's check it out though. Make them big. There it is. Yeah. There we go. Oh, that's looking yeah. awesome. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yep. You just gotta try it, fellas. That's it, man. Just let your imagination run wild. Yeah, so that looks cool. We got this spot left and this spot. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do on the back. So what I'm going to probably do is uh, finish these two spots and then tomorrow I'll clear it. But before we get off tonight, I will pull this tape and reveal this back piece. It's it. I like it. It's amazing. Uh, Adam's already oh. seen it. Um, yep. I think I showed it to you last night, right? Yeah, yeah. I did see it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Come out pretty, pretty cool. So I'm going to do that clear. Two. Is, is that yeah, clear coated over that tape? Yeah, it's clear coat. Yes, sir. Nice. All good to go. Um, right, so we get, to see, so we get to see the final result on that. Two different colors and two different textures, Adam, or same same colors and textures? Um, it's, I would do the same if you were to cut that one line and connect it all together. But if you're not mm -hmm. going to, if you're not going to do that, I'd do it. I would personally do it with two different colors. Okay, we'll do that then. But uh, uh, I like it. I think it's a different color. Right? Or uh, or not. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely put a drop Ooh. shadow on that later on would look awesome. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's something that uh, I might have to uh, get with you, do a little FaceTime with you and uh, see that. I'm still kind of still kind of green on that i'm not sure what to actually do when it comes to yeah. the drop shadows i mean i get some of it but oh man yeah just, just to get uh just get some ideas of where it should go and things like that so uh my airpod just died so are y'all can y'all still hear me pretty good yep yep can we still hear you okay yeah no problem all right I'll, uh, when we cut off of me, I'll go grab my other one here shortly. But, yeah, I think I'm going to lay down some orange and then red on top of orange. And see what that Yeah, that's looks. Hell, yeah, that's looking great. You can – another thing that probably a lot of people don't think about is after this is all said and done, like after all the tape is pulled, you could mix up a little bit of, like, a white pearl in a clear base coat or inner coat clear, and you could spray it over the whole thing. And it would give it all kind of a little bit of a shimmer without, um, without changing any of the colors or making anything look weird. You know what I mean? So, so take like the the ghost blue pearl that you have and mix it in some inner coat. You said or yeah. clear coat. 
Yeah, I mean, if you were to use a yeah a white pearl, or yeah any kind of a ghost pearl like that would would work, or just and a just regular shoot, pearl. And just yeah. shoot it over everything. Shoot it over everything. Yep. Mm -hmm. All that's, right. Uh, yeah. And well, that's an option. You know, I mean, uh, that would give the a shimmer to the whole board, and it would show up mostly on the white, and like on the other colors, it would pretty much almost disappear. I mean, it would okay. still have the same kind of shimmer, but like, I don't know, just one thing where you could always layer pearls after the fact. A lot of people always oh. think about layering them before and then putting colors over it, but okay. yeah, it's going to have a lot of options there. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to happen. <laughs> We're going to do it. <laughs> All right. I'm going to check this clear coat one more time because I think we're just about ready. All right, we're checking this right now. You can see that it's it's ready to go. That was real quick. We better get a coat on there pretty fast. You definitely do not want to wait over the time too. If it starts to if it starts to create a hard shell in the clear coat, and you you hit it with another wet coat of clear coat, there's a chance that you could um, cause an issue where it could burn up on you. It could wrinkle. And I won't get into all that, but it can happen. So you got to be careful with that. All right. If it hardens, do you wait and wet sand? Yes, you do. If you've waited, accidentally waited too long, you're better off just um, letting it dry. And then you would, if you have enough material there to sand it, you would sand it. If you don't have enough material there to sand it, you would scuff it and then hit it with more clear. But yeah, don't let that, don't let the, because the, sometimes that clear will be so dry on top and under is kind of wet still and you'll hit it really wet on top and then it'll penetrate through that hard layer causing that to wrinkle but that's for another day hopefully maybe some of you understood that but that's our last coat i don't uh let's go uh once this fumes out we'll go ahead and take one last look at the finished uh clear coat on the tank here but let's go ahead and move on to we have something a lot more interesting over here, Carport Customs. Don't let me steal the show, man. <laughs> well, I'm finished here. I'm I'm I'll be clocking out here once you're done. <laughs> so we're Oh man, don't let me check hold it you out. Up. No, 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 you're good. We'd love to see it. I mean, if we still got people people in, then I'll keep painting. Oh man, we're still still over a hundred. We've been pretty oh, okay. solid, pretty weird. solid yeah. over the whole uh, the whole show. Appreciate them all being here. So for that, actually, let's do another giveaway. Do another. We'll do another tri pack of a candy pack, which will include all three of the uh, red, gold, and blue candy colors. 
So if you haven't yet, you can go ahead and in the comments, hashtag time warp. And you have a chance to win automatically. Um, word to the wise, if you spray black through your <laughs> through your airbrush before you put uh, the right color in, make sure you clean it really, really good. <laughs> I can shot that. Yeah, black's the worst for that. Yeah. Well, have you gone have you gone red? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you. Oh wow. Oh wow, it's going through my ear pod. I didn't realize it did that. Yeah, going red to white is the hard thing. Sometimes when you go when you go from red to white, um, you have to put a little bit of black in between to kill that red. Or if not, you'll have pink. Oh uh, yeah. I don't know if you ever had that problem. Oh yeah. I did. I did want to show some. I want, let me get this camera back over here. C asks if you got to be in to win. No, you just got to know you've won. So if you go back and you watch the live and you know you've won or somebody's told you you've won, just make sure you um, email us. We will have, we'll keep track of who won. Oh, I'm an idiot. <laughs> I didn't know. I was like, yeah, I'm an idiot. So I am using, this is a new product that's out from Limeline. Um, we do have the gun cleaner. It does come with this nifty brush. What I like to do is just pop a hole into the cap. But yeah, we, we're gonna do a giveaway. We're just waiting for people to Give it away, give it away, give it away. Give it away. <laughs> Do it. All right, we ready then? Are you doing that? No, yeah, we, we've all been ready. Oh no, I'm just cleaning my gun here. Nothing to see here. Good luck, everybody. Polka dots. Isaac, you won, dude. Way to be. You won yourself a candy pack, so you won the all three candies. So you'll just have to email info at limeline.com oh i like the polka dots limeline Lime paint supply Whoa, that's cool. let's see that oh geez. i forgot to uh Freaking go shadow in. Uh, well, yeah, we'll do it without it. We'll do one without yeah, it. You can do it without it. You can do it without it. Yeah. You can always do that. You know what, actually, like I was saying, you know how I lay, everything gets layered. I wait for the shadows on the, once I clear it and I do it in the yeah. next round. That way, if you mess up your shadows, because a lot of it has to be done freehand, you can just sand it off. Ah, uh, gotcha. Yeah. So it gives you like a. What would cause my paint to pull off with my fine line tape after sanding my clear with 600? I was touching up some spots and color had color. waited and easy on top of 10 to 15 minutes before taping. One Never had it happen before. So 
I think it could be the it could be oversaturated. Um, you could have oversaturated over that paint, cause it to kind of bridge over. Um, to be honest with you, sometimes it just happens. Like um, certain conditions, it just happens. I always found that if you do lighter coats and you build up the paint, then um, you're, it's a lot safer bet. So uh, maybe I'm not saying you did, but I'm saying may, maybe usually when it happens to me is when I flooded it out too fast and applied too much candy. And uh, if you did you apply the candy with a gun or with an airbrush? That would be the other question I'd have for you. Do you have a discount codes for Amazon at the moment, Ashley? Um, we don't have discount codes on, everything's kind of just on a coupon. So if you go to the listing, it, you can just click the coupon and have it there. But we are looking into having um, YouTube live only codes for Amazon. So you'd be able to punch in a code and get an, addent uh, an additional price off um, even above the coupon. So I'm, I'm looking into that actually uh, right now, but we'll see that. Maybe that'll happen soon. What advice would you have for fixing a ding in a recently painted Harley gas tank? Um, I would take it to a paintless dent repair. That's probably what I would do because they're going to be able to get it out for most likely like a couple hundred bucks. And that's way cheaper than what it would cost to have to fix anything like that. But if you have to get the ding out and you have to paint it, then you might as well custom paint it. So, for those, oh, those stencils are those stencils lime line. Are those stencils uh, lime line? Yes, they are. Um, uh, oh, I'm sorry. So the big ones that I've been using, these bigger uh, pack here, these are lime line. These are not. I actually pulled these off of Amazon before Adam. Uh, graced me with a care package and um, they were for cake decorating they were like man I want to say it was like 10 or 12 bucks for um, oh I messed up there it was like 10 or 12 dollars for uh, yeah I messed up um, a whole pack of them man it wasn't bad yeah, that's a uh, you can you can find oh. all kinds of random stuff. No, I think you're uh, I think you're all right. You were looking to have that overlap, or you were looking to have that. Uh, yeah, that, it was supposed yeah. to go under. Yeah, nah. that's good. It's all good. What I can do is come back in and use the uh, color that I shadowed with. And just shadow it in. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said before, like when you, when you first laid down the tape lines, if you were to hit it with the light gray, and then even if you were to pull those lines, it would make all of the lines. Um, let me show you. Actually, I'm gonna show me. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring a helmet over here. I'm gonna show you real quick that I just recently painted, and I have a video coming out of that too. But this is rather than trying to explain it, I'm just gonna show it, and then. That way you can see the way that I tackled this compared to like how you did it. And then maybe not saying my way is better, but there's always right. different ways, you know? Yeah, for sure. Okay, Ashley, do the honors of uh, split screening us here. Okay. So this is a Simpson helmet and you can see right here. Yes, uh, so, yes So white, white base coat on everything. And then I laid out all my tape lines and then I just dusted a light coat of gray over everything. 
So some of it ended up getting paint, like everything was painted like, you know, here, obviously the black was put in, but the spots where I wanted to leave open, I just left them. And because I had those registered, it actually mm -hmm. made me a pinstripe. Ah, okay. Okay. I got so you. see how, so see how like your, your orange has a white pinstripe around it. Yeah. If that was, yeah. if that was edged in beforehand, before you did any of the other graphics, if that was edged in a light gray, you would have the, you would have the line go all the way through. Like it would show the other edge. Ah, as being a 16. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. That's the way I've learned. And then if you have, if you happen to accidentally pull off your tape, it gives you a guide to go off of. But obviously gotcha. it's like, like even right here before I painted this color, mm -hmm. I, I still had the light gray there, but it was covered and now it's covered with a different paint, you know? So it's all there and it's all registered, but then some of it I end up keeping to create the, the pinstripe. Ah, uh, okay. Luckily I have a wonderful wife standing next to me that does pinstriping. So, oh yeah, there you go. <laughs> I think that's oh, what's that, going to happen if she right could up. just come in and yeah, lay a fat pinstripe around everything and uh, yep. that'll fix all that. And then what it doesn't fix, I can come in with an airbrush. You'd be surprised what you can do with an airbrush. So, yeah, exactly. so that's it, man. That's, uh, let me lift this up a little bit. Let's get it. Let's go full screen on that, babe. We're going to hit you on full screen there. Okay. There we go. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there you go. I love the the color mix on the splatter. Yeah, it come out cool. pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So y'all want to see the other side? Yeah, let's see it. Uh, All right. Hopefully, uh, my paint job's good enough to where my clear don't peel, huh? Yay! Just hold your breath. Nah, it should be good. It's uh, it's got over twenty four hours of uh, cure on it before I uh, put tape on it. So hopefully, we'll be good here. Yeah. I always worry about it. It's just a thing. I, yeah. It's like pulling pulling tape off anything. A little bit of anxiety. Oh yeah, I, I've learned to go slow. You know, don't don't rip it off. You know. So this side is all done, and uh, everything is uh, was done with line line. Um, tapes, paints, candies. <laughs> flake everything um i definitely got a better hand on doing this low rider graphics um it was the whole reason i even got into this uh i've always been into low riders mini trucks uh, and i've always loved the high flake endless lines and and everything else so uh it was definitely the Definitely the reason I got into it oh, was where the holes were. Um, and I feel that I've got it, you know. Uh, a lot of people who see my work now are like, man, I can't believe you've only been doing that for a year. And uh, which is a good feeling. Um, but uh, the mini trucking graphics are going to take a little getting used to. But it's just like anything. You got to got to keep at it, you know. You'll, you'll eventually, after doing a few different styles and uh, um, a lot of trial and error, you'll kind of find like what, what you like to do the best. And maybe you can even create your own style once you get a few things down. Um, right. But yeah, I mean, I, I don't necessarily have any one style. I like, I like to switch my stuff up. I love the mini truck uh, graphics right now. Um, I've kind of been stuck on those for the last little bit, but you can't go wrong with a, metal flaked and candy paint job because man it really looks like a million bucks as you can see you know it's like yeah it looks that looks good so we really, got really teal good. and black um mm -hmm. this is a, a like a blueberry blue and then we did uh this is the blueberry blue this is the teal and this is done with just the black candy so you guys can see the different colors that the actual black candy will will, will throw depending yeah. on you know how saturated it is well that's it, uh... that's like the best example that i've seen ever like i've had a lot of people ask me for samples and i'm like that's yep. the way to there do it go. right there you can actually see the transparency of the black yeah that, 
that you wouldn't get off of black base coat. Right, right. Because even where it's saturated right there, you can still see through it. Um, now, one thing I do do differently that I've noticed watching your videos, um, a lot of times, like when you do the endless line or whatever, um, you tape it out and then you would spray it with this blue. And then you would spray the whole panel with the same blue. Um, I actually outline, and, and even with my um, my fish scales, I do it in black, uh, just so it pops out a little harder. Um, mm -hmm. Instead of doing it with the same, you know, because when you do it with, like, if I'd have done this with just the teal colors, you would have still been able to see it, see it, but it wouldn't be as predominant. So right, um, right. I'm still, I, and I'm still playing with that candy layering, but this, the serape style, has helped me a lot. Um, but even me doing this, I don't see it real good until after I throw clear on it because I am colorblind. So it's a little tough for me to do this, but what I do is when I'm spraying, I look at it like at an angle and I can see when I'm hitting it with my airbrush, I can see it getting wet basically. Well, not wet, but kind of shiny when you spray it down. So that's how I know I get coverage until I start seeing the layer uh, where the color comes in. But yeah, man. Wow. How do you that's uh color if you're colorblind? Does your wife help you? Um, no. Um so sometimes, yes. I, I don't want to lie. Yes, my wife is a huge help. I do a lot of wiring um on trucks and stuff, and she does help me. But like, um, let, let me get let me get a an example. So so you have you know your lime line purple. I know it's purple because it says it. <laughs> but mm -hmm. Me looking at this, I can't tell you this if this is blue or purple. I know it's in the blue family, purple family. Same thing with this. This is blue. Now, this looks the same as this to me until I do this. When I do this, I can tell that this is purple and this is blue. I have to put them together. Same thing with like red and green, uh, orange and yellow. I can't tell until I put them together them by themselves it's a 50 50 chance of me getting it right <laughs> um, wow that's a challenge in itself and you do well. yeah yes i appreciate it so i knew i wanted to do this blueberry blue um i lied earlier i said all this is done with limelight this blueberry actually wasn't this is with um an inspired candy it's called um it's something that i used before limelight come out with you know the candy um so i use that here it's it's i've seen it in the bottle quite a few times i haven't been able to use it so i was like i want to use that so i did this panel first and then um i was like man what i'm gonna go with so then uh we did the till and uh it come out beautiful but my wife helps me on like so for the serape on the side i was like you know i know i need to use these two colors what else should i use and she's like don't you have uh candy black i said yeah she said use the candy black that's gonna be perfect but put it in the middle of the two Something else I don't do that I've got to get used to doing is on the endless lines, I don't overlap the, the endless line. It's just like an intersection there. Um, it was kind of hard. I was going to do it on this, but with using the 16th line, that's kind of hard. So I'm going to wait till I got a bigger panel. I can do it with the eighth inch line um, and then try it out there. So, yeah. So this is like I say, guys, this is a um, best paint trophy for a car show coming up. So they'll be able to display it this way. Or that way, whichever flavor they like, you know. Yeah, that's cool. That's I think awesome. it'll be pretty cool. Good job. Look, Thank y'all. Thank y'all. That means a lot coming from uh, Adam and uh, his better half. <laughs> <laughs> How do you? Nah, know? guys. <laughs> um, you know, like I say, I I, I got to give. This is all because of you, Adam. Uh, honestly, man, I I've said it before. I'll say it again. I can't say thank you enough for not only um the great channel that you have and that you're willing to share your talent and teach other people that are willing to learn but also man you know i, I my my channel I, I didn't even have a thousand subscribers man when you decided hey i'm gonna sponsor you man and that means everything to me that means more than money that means more than time that means more than anything because you you you've seen it in me and you believed in me at a very early time in my not only paint career but my youtube career i guess you would say and i'll never say it enough man thank you very much yeah well well i knew i knew you had it in you so 
Um, yeah, I mean, you hustled, you, you hustled to get where you're at and saying, I do the same thing, you know, so I saw a lot of similarities between me and you and, but yeah, I'm, I'm obviously, you know, 20 years into the game. Um, and I've taken it to a, you know, professional career. Um, but yeah, whether you're making it a hobby or you're doing a side hustle or you're looking to make it a career, it can, it can happen. It all just depends on, you know, how much effort you put into it and going through the trials and errors of, you know, you have to make the mistakes or, you know, every time I remember just every time I finished a job, I would always say like, well, how could I, one, how could I do that faster and, and easier? And then how could I do that better? And I always kind of critiqued myself, even though it wasn't, I would never really say anything out loud. I would always say like, how could I do that just a little bit better next time? Right. Right. And yeah. Right. Eventually you do get better. And, but, um, learning the, the little tricks, which took me a long time, like it's, it's gathering up a little information here and there and making the mistakes and knowing how to fix your mistakes once they happen. And you, you eventually start getting good. I mean, it's really not even that hard. <laughs> You know what yeah, I mean? So, like, look at look at that. I mean, most people wouldn't think that you were still new at the game at that. You know, if yeah, you know, like, uh, the, the next level, the next level to that would be to add leaf in those areas, like you know those little stripes you have that going through there. Right. Which if, I thought I thought about doing it in there, um, but I'm kind of pressed for time because I've got other things that I'm painting too. I got two mailboxes and some other stuff. So I was like, as much as I yeah. want to, I'm still I'm still. I'm still, I'm not fighting with Leaf, but we're not getting along together. Um, we still have a good time, but uh, we still hate each other a little bit. But uh, yeah, that, that would have been definitely dope right there. And then what's yeah. crazy is before this right here would have taken me, man, five or six hours to do. I think I knocked this out in an hour, hour and a half. So I'm getting a lot faster with it. Yeah, you do. The speed really comes into it. Like I can, I noticed even me doing stuff live that I've gotten incredibly fast, and especially when I don't have to do it on live and I just do it on my own. We're just going to put on my headphones and do something. It's pretty crazy how fast it, things can be done, um, especially when it comes to metal flaking candy. It looks like you've done a million hours of work. Yes, really that's, it's what's, been, that's what's yeah, that's yeah. what's amazing. It's just, a, it's, just a, it's a metal flaking candy thing, really, you know? Yeah, yeah. And I love. I really do. Even after doing, like I said, it's only my second time doing the um, the mini truck and style, and I do like it because it's 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 part of my 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 culture culture and heritage from 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 growing up as mini trucking, um, and I love the style. Uh, I, I feel I'm a little too simple with it, to where with lowrider I can get pretty intricate with it. I still want to learn how to weave in and out. I, I look at stuff online. Um, even before I did this board, I can't always just come up with these ideas, look at a blank canvas and say, hey, I'm going to do it like this. So I always look at, I'll go back and look at some of your videos or go online and just look at, a matter of fact, I typed in lowrider painted skateboards and just looked at some examples. Now, I did not do mine like any of them out there, but I've seen some of them and they had one, it was like, it was like a line that they had some line work going through and then it had, it looked like a corkscrew going around it. And after I studied it for a minute, I was like, I could do that, but I don't have time to do that. I literally needed to do something that I could whip out in about an hour, an hour and a half, because I am donating this. So that's, and that's, you know, yeah, I mean, and that's pretty incredible to have a, a trophy like that anyways. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure they're going to be pumped. Yeah. Yeah. That. So we're, we're a full sponsor for this, this show. Uh, we were last year. We, we, we shoot car show coverage. Actually, there's a video from last year's show on there. We also give a, uh, a our, another trophy away that we gave out last year. We give um, a Builder's Choice trophy from Carport Customs. It's actually a bracket that they can use for their by air compressor. And what we do is we go out there, we find the guys just like us that are out there building these trucks under their carport in their garage, watching our videos, learning, getting their hands dirty. They got paint on their fingers. They got grease under their nails because those guys don't always get the trophies. You know, those guys get looked past. So we go out there. We talk to them, we um, we get the story behind the trucks, and then we 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 pick out of three of them, and uh, so that's what we did last year. And this year, I become a top tier sponsor of this show, and I was like, hey, you know, if you don't mind, I would like to do the best paint trophy. And they were like, yeah, yeah, whatever you want to do, we know you're gonna kill it. So 
Uh, and you did. So yeah, it looks awesome. Hell yeah. All right, man. All, All right. right. Well, clean up. Okay, brother. Well, I appreciate okay. you hanging in there with us. Probably pretty yeah, late man. there. And we're going to do one more giveaway. Is there, what, what do we got here? We got 71 people still on here. So we're going to do one more giveaway. Hey, thank you uh, for hanging in there. Yeah. Yeah. One more giveaway of the tri pack. So we're going to get the, the blue, gold, and red tri pack. All right. Looks like we got it in there. How many people we got? 73 entries. All right, let's go. Oh, it's not Michael's name. Justin Gray, winner. Good job, man. Just uh, as you know, info at limelinepaintsupply.com. Is that it? Is that it right? Yeah. Yep, okay. And you just got to email that. Let us know that you won. We have your name written down here and we will get those out to you. Let's go ahead and Okay, brother. Let's go ahead and put him back on real quick. Oh, All right, brother. I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> All right, man. Uh, I appreciate you, dude. Man, man thank hey, y'all. I got your extra large shirt. We'll get that out to you. Sweet, brother. I appreciate it, All man. Right. Thank y'all. All right, brother. Let's do it again, right. man. Anytime. Sweet. Okay, sounds good. We'll have you back. And if there's anybody else that wants to come in, paint with us, or you're new and you just want to show your work, we can always have you in and uh, you can drop in. But uh, but yeah, once again, we have the the shirts ready to go. You'll see them on Amazon, on Big Cartel, and the Shopify Limeline website. They are either a work shirt or if you, I think if you bu do the top button here, it turns into a party shirt. Really? It's okay. We got a work shirt. And we got a party shirt. All right. <laughs> Let's get some real super chats here. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> All right, brother. Well, that's it. Hey, uh, look, real quick, real quick. Uh, every other Sunday, 7 p.m., we do a live on Facebook, on uh, Carport Custom Facebook. It's called Car Carport Custom Shop Talk. We have other builders, uh, other photographers, painters, things like that. We just sit around. We talk about trucks, bikes, painting. I mean, everything. Uh, let comments come in. Same thing here. Ask questions and stuff like that. Every other Sunday starting this Sunday, 7 p.m. our time, which is central. So, And if y'all don't mind, go to Carport Customs YouTube. Subscribe. Check out the uh, channel. I'd much appreciate it. Yep, hit that like and subscribe button for, for Carport Customs there and appreciate him coming along again. But we'll definitely do this again. For sure, man. Anytime. Just give me a shout. Okay, man. All good right, brother. You, brother. Have a good night. Yep. Bye. Take care. All right. We'll see you guys on. We're going to be here next Thursday? Yes. Okay. But not the next. We'll be headed to Pittsburgh on the next one. But um, we may try to get one in Wednesday before that. We'll see how things go. But um, if you guys want to let us know how you want this paint, this tank to be painted, basically I have no idea. It's my tank. I know I'm gonna do a water slide decal on it. It's already metal flaked. So if you have an image, you can always like hit me up and say, hey, what about this image? I might say no, <laughs> but I might say yes. So um, I don't know, if you have ideas, throw them past me. Um, I like to hear your guys' ideas. So appreciate you being here. Thank you for all the super chats. Um, congratulations to all the winners. See you next Thursday. Bye, guys.